Do you think these cold opens have been getting kind of repetitive? Not as repetitive as Colts fans swearing they got their guy into the draft every year. All right, cut it, cut it, cut the record. Welcome back to the Justin Fields O-Line Supporters Group. It's your hosts, Evan and Aiden. We hope you enjoyed the future of the sports show. Rowan and Adrian did it last week and they did a pretty good job. This week we're back and we talk all things best with sports. Rowan gives you his updated NFL draft analysis since this episode comes out the day of the draft and Adrian gives you her Westfield team of the week. Does your seat feel kind of weird? Kind of, but it feels great to be back. That's the truth right there. Let's get started with a little baseball action. Your Rocks currently sit at six and five, back above 500 after a couple of embarrassing losses. After the loss at Carmel and the loss at Fishers, it was time to start playing like a team and play they did. They got back into the win column in the second game versus Fishers thanks to great pitching by Ty Anderson, who in 5.2 innings pitched, gave up four hits, no runs, and struck out six batters. And he only walked one as well. The offense was provided by Evan Russ, who in this game went two for three from the dish, and Austin Knott, who despite not getting a hit, drove in two runs. In Newcastle game on Saturday, we were a completely different team. Nathan Bodenberg, remember that name next year when Rowan and Adrian are mentioning him in every sports show. The kid shoved, in four innings pitch, he gave up just two hits and struck out six. Combine that with an offense that puts up 10 runs and you've got yourself a win. Evan Rust was again the highlight of our offense and he went three for three with two doubles and four RBIs. Colin Lindsay also went one for three with a triple and two RBIs. Their toughest battles lie ahead of them though. They have four games in the next five days, Monday and Tuesday at home versus number one ranked center Grove and Lawrence Central respectfully. Then the Noblesville series, away on Thursday and home on Friday. On to softball. They've played three games since Ron and Adrian last talked about them. In those games, they went two and one. The one loss was a 1-0 beating by Caston, but on the bright side, Chloe Tanner proved that she is indeed a phenomenal pitcher, giving up just four hits and striking out six. The first one of the Saturday games was a 19-14 barn burner versus Franklin County. This game saw five home runs by the Lady Rocks. Ali Dolans with two, followed by Grace Feltz, Kara Snedeker, and Marissa Stormer with one apiece. Speaking of good offense, the game after was an 11-4 win, this time over Kokomo. I love beating Kokomo, so this was very satisfying from start to finish. Not only did Chloe Tanner pitch 105 pitches, she went 2-4 for four from the plate with three RBIs and a triple. That has to earn some nomination for performance of the year. To hear our superlatives for Westfield Sports and more, listen to the Shamrock Sportscast in the coming weeks to see how you can vote for your favorite moments from this school year. This week, we are home away than home versus Noblesville, Yorktown, and Tri-West Hendricks. Three very competitive games against three very competitive teams. On to girls lacrosse now, and this week was a rough one for the girls. They lost to both Carmel and Cathedral 17-5 and 12-11 respectively. They look to bounce back this week as they have a sole game at Culver on Wednesday. Wednesday was senior night on the boys' side, and they won comfortably 15-5. This week, they have a home game versus Zionsville on Friday. Boys Golf narrowly lost to Garen at Sandy Pines, 298 to 297. Will Harvey tied for second with 70 strokes, two under on the day. On to this week, Monday, we have Senior Night, the big match at Meridian, and Saturday, we have the Ulan Invite. You know what's crazy and might be the craziest fact I've ever said on the show? Uh, the fact that the boys volleyball team hasn't dropped a set in a month? You read my mind. Yeah, we are 8-0 in the last eight games, and we look to continue our dominance this week. We see three games in a row this week, home versus Avon on Wednesday, at Pair Meridian on Thursday, and we host Chittard on Friday. Their season wraps up soon, so go support them in the dog days of their season. The Lady Rocks tennis team went 1-2 last week, beating HSC 4-1, and then suffering a loss to Zionsville 4-1. Then late on Friday night, they suffered a very close loss to South Bend St. Joseph 3-2. We see the ladies on the court take the court yet again on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday versus Noblesville, Fishers, and Gare, respectively. Now is the time where I messed up again and we we're just gonna go off script, so um, I don't know how much time we have left. We're in a little bit okay. of a crunch. Three uh, minutes. We have three minutes, all right, perfect. So I know Rowan is doing an NFL draft segment, so take it away, Rowan. Tell us about your, I don't know, top 10 picks in the draft, I'd say. Thank you, Evan and Aiden. Now the release date of this episode will be the same day as the NFL Draft, so I'm going to give you my predictions for the first 10 picks of the draft. Starting off, the Carolina Panthers pick one, Bryce Young, quarterback from Alabama. I mean, Bryce Young, despite the height concerns with him, his IQ is unreal and he is going to be a great NFL quarterback. And Overall, I've seen scouts compare his IQ to Tom Brady, so that obviously is incredible. Pick two, the Houston Texans. I've seen a million different reports of where they're going to go with this pick, but if they want to do the right thing, I think they need to get their franchise quarterback and they need to pick CJ Stroud from Ohio State. 
The only issue with CJ Stroud is some character concerns, and even then, if he can overcome that, he's going to be a great quarterback in the NFL. With the third pick, the Arizona Cardinals are going to go best player available, Will Anderson, as they really don't have a lot of help at edge rusher. So Will Anderson, who I think can be, can be a generational talent at edge rusher, would be a great pick. I think he could be the next J.J. Watt, honestly. Now the fourth pick, the Indianapolis Colts, my Indianapolis Colts, and I really want them to pick Anthony Richardson, but I've seen the reports that they actually like Kentucky's Will Levis over Anthony Richardson, so I'm going to predict they take Will Levis from Kentucky. Will Levis, the only issue with his game to me is the, you know, the IQ. Other than that, I think Will Levis, if he can overcome that and with the great coaching staff the Colts have with great quarterback minds, I think the Colts actually could be getting a great quarterback in Will Levis. With the fifth pick, the Seattle Seahawks are going to take the best player available, Jalen Carter from Georgia. Now Jalen Carter, he's an absolute beast, but character concerns have grown ever since the combine. He was arrested actually. so. If he can overcome that, I mean, he's going to be a great NFL player. With the sixth pick, the Detroit Lions coming off a surprising season where they look to make the playoffs this season are going to pick the best player available in my opinion, Devon Witherspoon, a corner from Illinois. Devon Witherspoon, I think him and Ahmad Sauce Gardner are going to be two of the best corners in the league three years from now. I think both of those guys are going to be incredible. With the seventh pick, the Las Vegas Raiders obviously in need of a quarterback. They do have Jimmy Garoppolo on the roster, but if you need a long-term fix at that position, then Anthony Richardson from Florida would be the way to go. Obviously, I think he's going to be a great quarterback. The potential is unreal, but he's very raw in some places in his game. But with the right coaching staff, I think Anthony Richardson is going to be a top five quarterback in the NFL. With the eighth pick, the Atlanta Falcons are going to select Jackson Smith and Najigba from Ohio State. Now, the wide receiver, Jackson Smith Najigba, he was unreal at Ohio State this year, and the Atlanta Falcons, they have nobody at wide receiver. I want you, the people watching at home, I want you to do a challenge for me. Can you name one Atlanta Falcons wide receiver, or two? You can't. So Jackson Smith the Jigba would be a great addition to that receiving core. With the ninth pick, the Chicago Bears, who originally had the number, the number one pick, they're going to select the best player available, in my opinion, and get some O-line help with Paris Johnson, the left tackle from Ohio State. Paris Johnson, in my opinion, he's a great player who overall, he only allowed like three sacks last year or for his entire career at Ohio State. So Paris Johnson, I don't get why people are debating him or Peter Skrowinski. It's obviously Paris Johnson. And the final pick I'm going to go over is the Philadelphia Eagles who lost in the Super Bowl. They are going to take, in my opinion, the best player available, Brian Branch, a safety from Alabama. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles, not a lot of team needs, but safety, they could improve a little bit on so i think it's just best to go best player available and continue to build a contender so those are my predictions for the first 10 picks of the draft now back to evan and aiden great segment rowan always a pleasure to hear from you here's adrian i believe she has a team of the week segment i can kind of guess who it's going to be given uh, the fact that they haven't lost uh, since March 27th. So uh, take it away, Adrian. Rowan is retiring from Westfield's Team of the Week, but don't worry, I got you covered for this one. I had to put a lot of things to mind seeing we have multiple teams with lots of talent, so this was a hard choice. But this week I have chosen a team underrated at this school. They have been undefeated since March, and that is men's volleyball. They are 13-2 for the full season so far and are 10th in the IBVCA conference. Brent Stone is leading with 45 total blocks and Chase Graff leads with an average of 2.2 digs per set. This team has many other talent-filled players and I am excited to see where this team goes for the remainder of their season. All right, so now it looks like we don't really know what to talk about. 
Um, we could just talk about random things. Um, you know what? Since Rowan just gave his takes of the NFL draft, what are your first three NFL draft picks? Carolina has one. Houston has two. Arizona has three. I'll go four because the Colts. So Carolina, I believe that they are going to take Bryce Young. System fit there. It seems pretty good. It seems pretty obvious at this point. I'll go Bryce Young as well. Houston, I, I, I know some people uh, are going to see them taking CJ Stroud. I don't think that'll be the case. Um, I think they'll actually take Anthony Richards. Wow. It's okay. bold. You never know. Since Evan is idiot and it's crazy. Houston will take CJ Stroud probably over any other quarterback. If they take Anthony Richardson, I wouldn't be surprised. Third pick, Arizona. Will Anderson Jr. Will Anderson. So easy. I feel like that's, and then the Colts at number four. It's either Stroud or Levis. I know Rowan has Levis and I'll just go Stroud just to be different as there's the bell. It's it's the end of third period. And we need to leave. And my pick is Will Levis to the Colts. He's playing, he's going back to the blue and white. Stay breezy and go rocks.